Hello, and welcome to another episode of ECNM Asks, a Q&A video series in which readers pose their most pressing electrical questions and our subject matter experts answer. I am Tommy Northcott, Senior Power Engineer and Branch Manager with Jacobs. Today I'm going to answer some questions I get asked regularly about the use of digital multimeters. Over the last few decades, the electrical industry has seen positive trends towards proper electrical safe work practices and the utilization of PPE. Even so, one very routine task that is consistently found to be improperly understood is both the selection and the use of digital multimeters. One of the most common errors I see is the lack of voltage rated gloves and protectors when using a digital multimeter. It is a common misconception that the insulation on the test probes is a primary protection to mitigate shock hazards for the workers. The truth is that the insulation on the probe is primarily intended to avoid inadvertently shorting phase to ground or phase to phase while taking measurements. The worker's primary shock protection is their voltage rated gloves, which are required when taking measurements on circuits greater than 50 volts. Yes, even for 120 volt AC circuits, gloves are required. I've also been asked many times about the CAT rating on digital multimeters. The CAT rating, one, two, three, and four, refers to the magnitude of transient spike that the tool can withstand without sustaining damage. These categories are based on the fact that high energy transients, such as a lightning strike, will decrease in magnitude as it travels through the impedance of the electrical system. The closer you are to the power source, the higher the CAT number you will need. CAT1 is for electronic circuitry, CAT2 for single phase receptacle loads, such as appliances or portable tools, less than 10,000 amp short circuit current rating. Uh, CAT3 is for distribution wiring, feeders, branch circuits, and permanently installed loads that are less than 50,000 short circuit current amps ratings. Um, and finally, CAT4 is for service feeds, uh, utility level circuits, and outside cable runs. So CAT4, since it is designed for being closest to the power source, can withstand the highest level of transients. Be sure that you are choosing the correct CAT rating for the application you plan to use it for. I've also seen cases of improper use of digital multimeters. Um, an arc flash hazard can occur if the meter is used incorrectly or if the wrong meter is selected for the given task. If the probes are plugged into the current measurement jack, for example, while attempting to take a voltage reading, then the multimeter effectively becomes a phase-to-phase -phase short and can cause an arc flash. The more obvious arc flash hazard would be using a digital multimeter on a circuit with a nominal voltage that exceeds the meter's rating. I've investigated an incident where a 600 volt phase rotation meter was used on medium voltage switchgear. Thankfully, the worker was wearing appropriate shock and arc flash PPE and was not injured in the resulting arc flash event. So always make sure the meter is rated properly for the task. You should also inspect your multimeter before using it. Start with a visual inspection, looking for signs of physical damage. And not many electrical workers will neatly pack their meter back in and their test probes back into the original box after using it. Typically, the leads are wrapped around the meter and then tossed into the tool bag or tossed into the back seat of the truck or wherever it goes. And, and it's just another reason not to depend on the probe's insulation to protect you from the shock. Because how many times throwing it somewhere does it take to damage the, the test probe's insulation? And prior to using the test probes, verify that they show no signs of physical damage. Run the test probes between your fingers as you visually inspect them, feeling for any signs of damaged insulation. Damaged test probes cannot be repaired and must be replaced. Never use damaged probes. When you insert the test probes into the jacks, the connection should feel firm and secure. And you should never assume that a meter is working properly. Before working on a de-energized and locked out circuit, absence of voltage must be verified. The proper method for verifying the absence of voltage is to do the live dead live method. You verify that your meter is working on a known, uh, known energized source, preferably the same nominal voltage that you'll be verifying. Then you verify the absence of voltage on all phases and neutral. And then finally verify that the meter is still working on a known good energized source. The digital multimeter is an essential tool in every aspect of the electric, of electrical work, and I hope this information helps you in your ability to use it safely throughout your career. Well, that's about all the time we have for this episode. Thank you for watching. 
Be sure to check back in the members only section for new ECNM Asks videos being posted regularly. Also, feel free to send me your questions. I'd be happy to answer them. Have a blessed day.